Hello everybody, my name is Oh Sunai. I'm the Chief Mobile Architect at Open Networking Foundation. Welcome to our webinar on Ether. I'm very excited to present to you our Enterprise 5G LTE Edge Cloud as a Service. Over the last number of months, we have advanced on Ether very rapidly, all the way from innovation and architectural design to rounding up the ecosystem, development and operationalization. I hope my excitement rubs on you and you also find it an exciting project and join us at ONF for its evolution. Ether is enterprise facing. So let us first set the stage and understand the evolving trend around private enterprise networks. Enterprises are going through a digital transformation towards Industry 4.0. A key aspect of this transformation is the enablement of automation of the enterprise processes, manufacturing and machinery. This automation requires the enterprise to collect data from different aspects of the operations using sensors, cameras and other IoT devices. A critical component of this operation is the connectivity of these devices to where machine learning and AI based workloads that ingest and process the data towards this operation reside. This means enablement of private 5G and LTE networks. And increasingly, enterprises want these workloads to run on premises at the enterprise edge. This means enablement of edge clouds. Across a diverse set of industry verticals, we observe that the majority of enterprises want these services in the next one to two years. This presents a huge opportunity for different stakeholders, mobile network operators, a new breed of private network service providers that we see starting to come up, especially after the recent FCC announcement on CBR's commercialization, as well as cloud providers, platform providers, system integrators, and enterprise edge application developers. Depending on the engagement, different business models will arise. Ether has been architected in a flexible manner, so it can be used with these different business models in mind. We are now ready to talk about Ether. So enterprises want both connectivity services and edge applications that will enable their digital transformation. The solution for this needs to be reliable, support high capacity and be secure. In addition, a managed service, one that is akin to other cloud-based managed services enterprises get, is a preferred solution, as most enterprises will not want to have dedicated personnel to run these. Having said that, even when they are getting these services as managed services, they will want the power to control the fate of their own local traffic, manage their own subscribers, set their own policies, and decide on and onboard their own edge cloud applications. Last but not least, most of the applications the enterprises will consume will not only have an on-premise presence, but also backends in public clouds. Think of inference and machine learning, which requires support for multi-cloud connectivity. To achieve these goals, we need to rely on a number of pillars. To enable private mobile connectivity, we need a 3GPP compliant network, either 5G standalone or non-standalone, or LTE with a 5G evolution in mind. This alone is not sufficient though. We need to base the deployment of such a network on disaggregation and virtualization, SDN, and a distributed cloud paradigm that uses cloud principles. Let us quickly go over what we mean by disaggregation, virtualization, SDN, and distributed cloud in this context. Consider this high-level illustration of a mobile network. We have the radio access network connecting the end devices to small cells or base stations over the mobile link using a specific spectrum band. Next, we have the mobile core network that serves two purposes. It forwards traffic back and forth between the RAN and the egress of the network from which re we reach the applications we want to consume, and also while doing that, controlling this traffic. Specifically, 
conducting mobility management control, session control, subscriber control, policy control, charging control, lawful intercept control, etc. Disaggregation of the mobile network starts from the mobile core. The first step is the disaggregation of the control and user planes. Next, we can conduct further disaggregation by splitting the mobile core control into its functional components. Similarly, we can disaggregate the RAN as well. Following the ORAN architecture, this disaggregation may split the RAN protocol stack into components so that we have the radio unit at antenna sites, the distributed unit at cell sites, and the central unit, which is further split into control and user planes that runs from a data center pooling multiple DUs and RUs. Once disaggregated, we can softwareize all of these components so that the virtualized network functions run on commodity hardware. We can then establish a data center using an SDN infrastructure on which we run these VNFs. This infrastructure could be based on the next generation SDN principles, where the programmable forwarding elements run StratumOS on them, and the centralized SDN controller could push P4 programs to establish the pipelines and subsequently use P4 runtime to control these pipelines. The role of SDN does not end here in our context, realizing that the small cells and the base stations are nothing but specialized forwarders, we can apply SDN principles to turn them into programmable entities as well. Then the radio resource management components in the RAN protocol stack could be centralized to run as SDN applications on a RAN specific controller. We could also consider developing P4 programs to run the RAN CU and the mobile core user planes right on the fabric for gains on performance as well as security. We have disaggregated virtualized network functions for mobile connectivity and software defined control of the access network. They can all run from data centers. The next step is to architect the overall network towards an optimized operation for a given use case. This means deciding where to run which component and transform some of these components so that they can pool others that are running in a more distributed manner. Specifically, some of these network functions will need to run at cloud locations that are at the edge. The reasons could be because they require low latencies or traffic localization or that the transport network costs need to be kept reasonable. In our case, the goal is to architect the system so that the connectivity and edge cloud management may be offered as managed services to the enterprise, while empowering the enterprise with the capability to programmatically localize some of their traffic, manage their subscribers, and policies. Ether is a distributed multi-cloud architecture that enables exactly this. We were able to architect, develop, and operationalize Ether relatively quickly. This is the power of open source. Ether leverages and builds on a number of prior ONF projects that have found their ways in operators' production networks. ONF as an organization focuses on the Edge Cloud. The infrastructure we built the Edge Cloud is commodity of the shelf servers, white box programmable switches, and access devices, in our case, small cells. The corresponding infrastructure control for SDN infrastructure leverages ONF Stratum that runs on programmable switches and on us with Trellis applications. For the cloud orchestration, we leverage Kubernetes. To construct the connectivity service graphs, and connect them to Edge applications. And to aid in operationalizing the Edge, we have ONF's XOS. Next, we have OMEC, ONF's disaggregated and virtualized mobile core that runs in a distributed manner. 
Some components, namely the user plane, will run at the edge, and some, namely the control functions, would run in central clouds. Then we have SGRAN, an exemplar platform development that is ORAN architecture consistent. This includes the development of an ONOS-based near real-time RIC. Unique to Ether, we have the management and control platform that enables an as-a-service offering polling many edges while running in the central cloud. The Edge Cloud is open to hosting third-party Edge applications. These applications may have Edge presence and central cloud backends requiring multi-cloud connectivity for the Edge Cloud. To facilitate some of the Edge application requirements, we also bring in an additional resource to the Edge, namely the GPU to be orchestrated also by Kubernetes. Collectively, these components make up Ether. Included in Ether is additional features as well as overall configuration for a seamless, tightly integrated operation. Ether is ONF's enterprise 5G LTE Edge Cloud as a service. It enables two distinct managed services, 5G LTE connectivity as a service and Edge Cloud Management and Control as a Service. Now consider the following premise. We have an enterprise with employees and visitors. The enterprise has a production line and engineers that oversee it. It has meeting rooms consuming multimedia services. It has an on-prem data center. Even though more and more of its data uh, workloads are pushed to the public clouds, there are some workloads that are local. It has surveillance, possibly for security reasons. And since it is transforming its processes, manufacturing and machinery towards automation, it is deploying more and more sensors, cameras, IoT devices on its premises. To this environment, Ether brings two distinct components, an Ether Edge, a micro data center leveraging an SDN infrastructure and running a Kubernetes cluster. Ether Edge is constructed using commodity white box components. The second set of components are the small cells to provide coverage and capacity for the private network. Depending on the use case, these small cells may be operating on an operator's license spectrum or on CBRS band or on an enterprise's own license spectrum uh, in the given geography. Included in Ether is also ONF's open source mobile core OMEC that is distributed between the edge and the public cloud. OMEC has been architected to allow its control plane to oversee multiple user planes, each one running on a distinct Ether edge at a potentially different location. The presence of the mobile core user plane at the edge allows for a local breakout, which in turn empowers the enterprise to programmatically keep some of its traffic local. Since Ether includes its own mobile core, it also provides the enterprise SIM cards to enable private network connectivity. Ether also has an enterprise edge management and control platform that centrally monitors all Ether edges for the enterprise, including the private network subscription. The platform also conducts lifecycle management for the edge locations. Ether disaggregates network and edge cloud control between the service provider, whoever it may be, and the enterprise. Specifically, the enterprise is empowered with controlling its own traffic, deciding which flows stay local, which flows go out, who accesses which services, and which applications may run all or some of their components on the Ether Edge. Then, on the enterprise premises, we have small cells and Ether Edge. Ether Edge hosts the mobile core user plane workload, which is controlled centrally from the public cloud, 
giving us connectivity as a service. Ether also enables connectivity to all public clouds. Further, the edge components of the machine learning and AI platforms that are available on public clouds run on Ether. This means that any edge components of applications that leverage these platforms and their APIs can readily run on Ether. Ether can also run any other enterprise edge application that can run on Docker containers. Through a central platform, Ether enables enterprise management and control. And in the near future, Ether will enable network slicing with slicing policies, slice traffic flow rules, and per slice subscriber mapping, all controlled by the enterprise through a portal. Ether also envisions to provide an Ether API gateway that will allow application and platform developers to use all public cloud Kubernetes service APIs, as well as Ether Edge SDN fabric and private network RAN and mobile core specific APIs. This gateway is envisioned to be extensible so that any platform that runs on Ether will be able to publish its own APIs here. The Ether architecture looks as follows. Running from the public cloud, we have Ether management and control platform that oversees all Kubernetes clusters that make up Ether. This includes all Ether edges, as well as components running on public clouds. This platform enables multi-cloud connectivity for each edge and allows for runtime workflow management, which effectively brings the capability to add, to add new end devices, new small cells, and new Ether edges, potentially at new locations, to the operational network without disrupting its operation. It is also a platform that enables global monitoring of all Ether edges. Last but not least, it allows for programmatic service graph composition and operationalization of connectivity workloads to edge applications for end-to-end -end reachability. Running on a distinct Kubernetes cluster is the mobile core control plane, overseeing multiple user planes, each running on a different Ether edge. Each edge is effectively a Kubernetes cluster running on an SDN infrastructure. It hosts connectivity workloads, virtualized components of the RAN, and the mobile core user plane. It also hosts infrastructure control workloads, the SDN controller for the fabric, as well as the SDN controller for the RAN, for an ORAN architecture support. It also hosts all edge applications that the enterprise wishes to consume, either for low latency reasons or for traffic localization goals or to minimize the backhaul traffic costs. And both the management and control platform and the mobile core control plane oversees multiple edge locations. Ether has been operational since December 2019. We are using Google Cloud right now for centralized Ether components, but we have also tested the operation with Azure and AWS. The operational network uses the CBRS band. The first operational Ether Edge was deployed at ONF Menlo Park office. We have since expanded the Ether pilot network operation to the ONF office in Tucson and Intel Labs in Hillsboro. A fourth Ether Edge has been constructed as the demo edge. This assumes a potential deployment business model where an operator owns and operates the solution. The demo edge enables two distinct mobile networks from the same Kubernetes cluster, a private network using CBRS and a wide area network indoor coverage extension using license band. Preparations to launch more sites are underway. This will keep us busy in the next few months. The network follows CI-CD principles. In addition to the production network, we have a staging network to develop new features, perform bug fixes, etc. Mature workloads are then migrated to the production network. 
Connected to the Menlo Park Edge is a fair number of handsets of employees who utilize eSIM technology to connect to Ether and their own service provider networks while in the office, as well as CBRS dongles and CBRS IP cameras. Other edges I have mentioned are also all operational now. Let us focus on the demo edge. As with other edges, the management and control platform runs centrally from Google Cloud. The demo edge runs two mobile networks, thus it needs two mobile cores. We have the control plane of one of these cores running from Azure and the other from Google Cloud. Both clouds also have IoT platforms with edge components running on the Ether demo edge. We have applications that leverage these platforms running on the edge as well. As I have mentioned, the edge cloud is composed of commodity and white box hardware components. As such, we have commodity off the shelf servers and OCP servers, white box SDN switches, a management switch, a generic router, as well as basic GPU resource forming our edge. The dual network connectivity is provided by two distinct small cells, one for CBRS and another for license band. Each network has its own set of end devices. I mentioned that a fair number of ONF employees, including myself, are now connected to Ether in Menlo Park. You are probably aware that all new phones from Apple, Google, and Samsung support the CBRS band. Further, all of these phones also support electronic SIMs, the capability to realize the SIM card and software, thereby enabling a potential dual SIM operation. We utilize these capabilities. Employees with these new phones use Ether for their data connections whenever they're in the office. Their voice and text service is still provided by their own network operators. Let me demonstrate this using my own personal phone. To make my point, I have turned off Ether access on my phone. As you can see, I'm a T-Mobile customer. Now I use the phone settings to allow my phone to access the Ether network. My phone starts searching for the Ether network, and upon detecting its pilot and going through the authentication process, as you can see, it is now connected. Let us do a quick web browsing. As you can see, we have internet access. Let us next check the network speed. As you know, CBRS is defined for a TDD operation, which means downlink and uplink share the same spectrum band. The ratio of spectrum allocation between the two links is configurable on the RAN. In Menlo Park, we have a 4 to 1 ratio between downlink and uplink. As you can see, this gives us a pretty good downlink rate and a somewhat modest uplink rate. The downlink rate you just saw is actually upper capped by our office backhaul and not the mobile link. We could have gone higher if our backhaul allowed for it. I mentioned that the demo edge supports two networks, CBRS and license band. Now we show a video call from a CBRS phone to a license band phone. Both networks have local breakouts at the Ether demo edge. This means the communication traffic will be confined on-prem without requiring any backhaul bandwidth, except for mobile network control for both networks. We see a colleague of mine making the call and another colleague receive it. They now show us the phone screens to let you see that the connectivity is indeed established. The first Nano NF Edge was set up at Intel Labs in Hillsboro. Here is Christian explaining to us their setup. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Christian from Intel, and today you know, I'm showing you our Ether Edge we have installed here at Intel in Portland. CBRS radio operating in the 3.6 uh, gigahertz. To this radio uh, connecting, uh, we have some uh, Pixel 4 phone. We have you know, 
or seal uh, connecting to the Ether network. So the radio RU plus DU uh, operates here. The CU and the user plane component of the EPC runs in an IT infrastructure in a data center here on premise. And the control plane of the EPC runs in Google Cloud. We'll show you after a few applications, uh, Google Map showing the location, as well as a Hangout call from a CBRS phone to a phone outside of this uh, network to Wi-Fi or cellular phone. Now we see a screen capture of one of their local CBRS phones. We see first that the phone is indeed connected to the private local Ether network. We then see that this network is in Hillsborough, near Portland. Next, we see Sai, another Intel colleague, using the Ether phone to make a Google Hangout call to Christian's mobile phone. We see them communicate. Let us next take a look at the centralized management and control platform. Let us first log on. We see all the Kubernetes clusters we are centrally managing here. Let us first take a look at the demo edge. Here we see all edge applications that are deployed locally. And here we see all workloads that enable centralized Prometheus and Grafana. And here we see the RAN CU and the mobile core user plane. And here all Kubernetes related workloads. Next, we take a look at the Intel Edge. And here we see the RAN CU and mobile core user plane workloads. Next, we see the ONF Menlo Park Edge. And again, we see the mobile core user plane workloads here. Next, we see Google Cloud. We run here our mobile core control plane for the CBRS network. Again, we see all workloads that enable centralized Prometheus and Grafana operations. And also Kubernetes related workloads. And last, we see the Azure Kubernetes cluster, where we run the mobile core control plane for the license band network. The management and control platform also allows for central monitoring of all Kubernetes clusters that we manage. We can conduct monitoring on a per site basis. Here you see all the mobile core control plane workloads running on Azure. We then see the same for the mobile core control plane workloads running on Google Cloud and the mobile core user plane and RAN CU workloads on Intel Edge and Menlo Park Edge. We can also conduct monitoring on a per workload type basis. Here you can see a summary of all mobile core user planes running on every Edge cloud we manage. Next, you see a detailed view of all mobile core control plane workloads running on Azure and Google Cloud. And here, you see the mobile network subscriber specific monitoring, all active users, who they are, where they are, type of device they're using, etc. Last, you see a more detailed view of all mobile core user plane workloads. I mentioned earlier on that in general, an Ether Edge leverages the enterprise's existing backhaul. However, certain use cases dictate a satellite backhaul connectivity as well. Think of an oil rig in the middle of an ocean, a cargo ship, or a mine. There are also potential cases where an enterprise might want to leverage a satellite backhaul as a backup. For these reasons, we at ONF have partnered with Inmarsat to bring Ether a satellite backhaul. 
Here you see two of my colleagues work on configuring a satellite antenna we placed at the ONF parking lot. Here you see the portal for configuring the satellite connection. You see the specific satellite we connect to, the corresponding azimuth and elevation information, and the observed signal to noise ratio. And here you see the ether performance with a satellite backhaul. You see on the left a mobile handset streaming a YouTube video with no issues. On the right, you see another handset for a speed test. We observe, as expected, a rather large pin duration, some 800 milliseconds, due to the satellite connection. Our downlink rate, however, hovers around 5, 5.5 megabits per second while the uplink rate is around 1 to 1 1.5 megabits per second. Now let us take a look at the edge applications that we have instantiated on the Ether Demo Edge. The first application comes from us, an open source CDN implementation. Next, we have an application from Microsoft Research. For this, we have brought in the Azure IoT Edge platform to run on Ether. We then run the Microsoft Research ML-driven object identification application on this platform. We have an ML-based Smart Spaces application from Infosys that requires GPU resources at the edge. And last but not least, we have an application from Google Cloud that leverages their AI platform to conduct food traffic counting in real time. Let us first look at the CDN application. For this, we have a local multimedia streamer running on EtherEdge with a local cache. Running on Google Cloud, we have a remote streamer and an archive. Let us observe the performance. Here you see two handsets that will request content at the same time, one seeking content stored at the edge in local cache and another seeking content from the remote archive. We see that the lo local content pre-roll delay is a few seconds less than that of the remote content. Next, we look at the object identification application. ONF, together with Microsoft Research, has developed an object identification solution for enterprises leveraging mobile connectivity and the Azure IoT platform. The application identifies trained objects that are captured by a camera that is connected to the private network via CBRS dongle. The end device is realized using a Raspberry Pi that has a simple display module on it and a camera attached to it. Connectivity to Ether Edge is enabled using the CBRS dongle. The application runs workloads at three locations, the Device Edge, the Enterprise Ether Edge, and Azure Cloud. To enable this, we run the Azure IoT Edge platform on both the Device Edge and the Ether Edge. Then, Azure IoT Hub running on Azure Cloud pushes the camera capture and display workloads to the Device Edge and the Image Classification Service workload to EtherEdge. The video collection, cognitive services, and display modules are being engaged on Azure IoT Hub. Let us take a quick look at our Azure portal for Ether. You see us engaging with an Azure IoT Hub. The IoT Hub has two device twins, since it leverages two edge locations, the Device Edge as well as the Ether Edge. Running on the Ether Edge, as you can see, we have the Image Classifier service. And running on the Device Edge, we have the Camera Capture and the Display Services. All of these services are orchestrated by the Azure IoT Hub platform. Let us see this in action. You see the Raspberry Pi with a SenseHat display module attached to it. Also attached to it is a flexible camera. Raspberry Pi connects to the private CBRS network via CBRS dongle. The Edge application displays icons for learned objects that we capture on camera. We first see the banana, 
being captured and see the corresponding icon. Next, we see an apple being captured and see its corresponding icon. Bringing back the banana gives us the banana icon once again. We now take a look at the Infosys Smart Spaces application. Leveraging a camera, this application detects the occupancy level of a given enterprise space in real time and reports it using a dashboard. In this application, the camera capture and the inference engine workloads run on the GPU locally at the edge and connect to a learning and dashboard and analytics engine and that runs on Azure. So here on the top left, you see a real-time camera capture of a small meeting room at ONF in Menlo Park. You will see the mobile team members go into this room and see the application detect them and increment the occupancy meter accordingly in real time. ONF and Google Cloud Teams have jointly enabled a real-time foot traffic counting application powered by Google Cloud's AI platform, which enables the Video Intelligence API to run locally on the Ether Edge. The latency-sensitive components of the application, like ingestion, ML inference, and visual display, run on Customer Edge managed by Ether, while data streaming and analytics run in Google Cloud using PubSub and BigQuery, respectively. Here you see the demo in action. Once again, the ONF mobile team are the actors here. You see a red mobile phone that serves as the camera. On the bottom right, you see the application detect the foot traffic count. And on the top right, you see the application dashboard where this traffic is counted. In this last section of the webinar, let us focus on ONF's software-defined RAN project and how it integrates with Ether. Just like Ether, ONF's SD RAN project is based on the pillars of disaggregation, virtualization, SDN, and cloud principles. Let us see how. In a cellular network, RAN provides wide area wireless connectivity to mobile devices. Towards this end, it conducts two fundamental tasks. It converts IP packets to physical layer packets suitable for transmission over the time varying mobile channel using packet and signal processing techniques. It conducts radio resource management control to determine how to best use the radio resources to provide connectivity to active end devices. Disaggregation of the RAN effectively splits the RAN protocol stack so that the individual components can be realized independently. This aims to deal with the challenges of high total cost of ownership, high energy consumption, better system performance by intelligent and dynamic radio resource management, as well as rapid open innovation in different components while ensuring multi-vendor operability. Following the ORAN architecture, the disaggregation solution needs to enable a distributed deployment of RAN functions over the coverage area. Specifically, the central unit will centralize packet processing functions and realize them as virtualized network functions running on commodity hardware and place them in geographically centralized Talco Edge Cloud locations. The distributed unit will realize baseband processing functions across cell sites, realize them as virtualized network functions running on commodity hardware, but also allowing for possible hardware acceleration using FPGAs, etc. Radio units will enable geographical coverage using radio functions across antenna sites realized on specialized hardware. All 
quality interfaces between these components are being specified in the ORAN Alliance. In addition, ORAN is pursuing controlled user plane separation for the CU, further disaggregating it into CUU and CUC. In the disaggregated RAN architecture, the RRM functions, illustrated here as red boxes, reside in the CU and in the DU. We can state that the CU side RRM functions follow near real time delay loops, while the DU side RRM functions follow real time delay loops. Realizing that a base station is in fact a specialized forwarder and that the RRM functions intend to control traffic flow on the wireless link, we can apply SDN principles to the RAN. This effectively means we need to logically centralize the CU side RRM intelligence to run on a RAN optimized SDN controller, called RAN Intelligent Controller, or the RIC. To achieve this control, we need to first define a radio network information base. Let us call it RNIB, the time varying mobile network state in terms of nodes, which are base stations and end devices, links that are both active and candidate, and their attitude attributes and maintain and expose this RNIB using an open interface to RIC applications. The RIC applications will then exert control on the RAN based on the changes they observe on the RNIB. RIC will need to convey the application commands to the base stations using its southbound interface, the E2 in the ORAN architecture. The RIC is a critical component of the RAN operations. Therefore, its architecture needs to be highly available and scalable while satisfying the latency constraints. All the while, the real-time RRM intelligence will need to continue to run in a distributed manner on the DU because of its stringent latency constraints. However, the new real-time RIC can also conduct programmatic configuration of these functions using open interfaces. The configuration parameters could vary from modifying scheduler side QoS policies, migrating from one available scheduler function to another, or even injecting a new scheduler binary, as well as configuring potential RAN slicing parameters. The first component that is under development in the SD-RAN project is the near real-time RIC based on ONF's ONOS. A first-generation implementation of ONOS has been in use for over five years. It currently controls Comcast's trellis-based fabric rollout in a number of geographies in the U.S., serving hundreds of thousands of live customers. The ONOS RIC enables a multi-cluster operation for high availability and scalability. The southbound interface of ONOS RIC is the ORAN-specified E2 interface. ONOS RIC drives the efforts to develop the next generation of ONOS, based on a microservices architecture. These services are Topology Manager, Configuration Manager, RAN Control Manager, Distributed Store, and Certificate Manager. ONOS RIC provides an open API to host third-party RAN applications. These applications will vary from basic RRM functions to self-organizing network applications to ML-driven network optimization applications. As I have mentioned, ONOS RIC is part of ONF's SD-RAN project. SD-RAN is effectively an exemplar platform consistent with the ORAN architecture. In addition to ONOS RIC, it will develop open source implementations of DU, CU control plane, and CU user plane, with the user plane implemented using P4. All of these components will natively run on Docker containers and will be orchestrated in a Kubernetes environment. The solution will be interoperable with third-party RUs, and it will leverage commodity off-the-shelf servers and white box P4 programmable switches. And the solution will natively run on and be lifecycle managed by Ether. Now let us see Onos RIC in action. We have two sample RIC applications developed that run on ONOS RIC, a basic handover application and a mobility load balancing application. 
Since there are no ORAN E2 supporting small cells in the market, to illustrate the ONO streak operation, we have developed a RAN emulation environment. This environment uses Google Maps as its graphical user interface. Base stations and end user devices are dropped on a geography. End user devices are mobile and their mobility patterns are random, but they follow actual roads on Google Maps. Here, the geography selected is Berlin. We start with a few devices to show how Onostrix centrally conducts handovers across the geography. Then we drop more users to illustrate the mobility load balancing application that runs in parallel with the handover application. The load balancing application effectively intends to limit the number of active devices a base station can simultaneously serve. Once a threshold is reached at a base station, it progressively lowers its transmit power, thereby reducing its coverage, while the neighboring base stations progressively increase theirs to cover the areas this base station has abandoned, as you see in the screen. Let us ne next look at the Onos RIC dashboard. For every RIC application, statistics for latency and execution frequency are given. Average values as well as distributions are shown here. More detailed information is also available. The time varying RNIB is shown here using Grafana. Grafana extracts this information from Prometheus, which acts as the time series database for Onostric. We next see how Onos RIC scales by dropping more users. This demo uses a single Onos RIC instance. Further scaling can be achieved using a multi-cluster deployment. Now some key takeaways from this webinar. Ether is ONF's open 5G LTE Edge Cloud as a Service solution that seamlessly combines private mobile connectivity to an edge cloud and conducts combined orchestration. It is the first of its kind. Ether has a central edge cloud management and control platform overseeing all edges. It can run from any central cloud where one can run Kubernetes. Ether's mobile core control planning for connectivity runs from public cloud while its user plane runs at the edge. The control plane oversees many user planes, each hosted at different enterprise locations, thereby enabling connectivity as a service. Ether is part of a multi-cloud solution for the enterprise. As such, it enables connectivity to all public clouds. While it naturally leverages an enterprise's existing backhaul, a satellite backhaul is also feasible with Ether. Ether has the capability of hosting third-party edge applications. These applications could run on Google Cloud AI or Azure IoT Edge platforms that already run on Ether or run independently as long as they are Docker containerized. Finally, Ether is ORAN architecture consistent. It already hosts an ONOS-based near real-time rig with plans to host DU and CU components in the future. We already have a vibrant ecosystem for Ether. In addition to the ONF partner operators, this ecosystem enjoys active participations from Intel, Infosys, Acceleron, GS Lab, Sarcom, Inmarsat, and Microsoft Research. This concludes my talk. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.